right, we're now joined by Matt Kenseth, driver of the number $20 General, General Toyota in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Matt, last weekend at Atlanta, you clinched a spot in the chase. Um, going into that weekend, does, going into this weekend, does that change your approach at all for Saturday night's race? Not really. I mean, um, you know, for the last 25 races, we've known that if you win, you're almost for sure into the chase. So um, it doesn't doesn't really change it. I mean, I'm glad we're in and we don't have to, you know, stress about it tomorrow night. But um, like I said, we've known that for for 25 weeks. We've been doing the best we can to try to try to get a win and and um, finish as high as we can. I feel like we're uh, uh, gaining on it. On our performance a little bit, and, and we've been putting together some some good races when we don't get caught up in wrecks or have problems. We've been finishing pretty good, so hopefully we can just um, you know kind of continue the momentum from the last last few weeks and and get up there and battle for a win. All right, we'll now open it up for questions. Please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Kenny in the back. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Matt, how different, or is your approach any different going into the chase this year, having not won as opposed to what it was last year when you were so successful? I, I don't think my approach is, is any different. Um, you know, the rules are a little bit different. Obviously, if, um, you know, we won at Chicago last year, obviously the next two races you would maybe be thinking about things a little differently, knowing that they're, you know, the way it's set up now, would whoever wins Chicago, if they're in a chase next to are basically meaningless besides, you know, testing and trying to finish and, you know, pay and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but no, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I think about it a little differently because last year we went into the chase and um, had a lot of confidence that uh, if as long as we had even luck, I felt like we could really, we could outrun everybody or we could, you know, be right next to outrunning everybody and, and, uh, the end of the day, it wasn't true. We got all run by the 48. You know, we got beat on performance. We didn't get beat on bad luck necessarily. So, um, you know, this year I don't feel like that right now. I mean, we don't have – we haven't had the speed the first 25 weeks to to outrun everybody, even on our best days. We've been in position to win a few races. And, um, if, if, you know, cautions would have, you know, not came out or things would have fell our way or whatever. We put ourselves in that spot a few times, but we haven't been obviously nearly as strong as we were last year at this time. So. Um, you know, I, I, I guess you don't really change your approach. You go out and race as hard as you can, try to finish as the best you can and do all that stuff. But, you know, I realize where we're at today. We, we need, you know, to not have any problems. We need to be perfect. You know, we need to be perfect on pit road and on the racetrack and execute and all that stuff and get the best finishes we can and uh, um, hopefully at the same time improve our performance and, and hopefully get through that first round and, and start working on that second one. Over to Bob. Bob Parker, Sporting News. Um, we'll probably be asking a lot of the guys who need to get in to the chase, you know, how rough can you be, you know, and do you ask for forgiveness later? I'm curious from a guy who's in the chase, do you expect things to be rougher than usual, Richmond, or would it be less because, you know, there, there are few guy, fewer guys kind of racing as far as for points, you know, there's only, if a guy's racing 18th, you know, what, what's he going to get from being aggressive to get to 17th? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like any other race. It depends what what um, position you're in, the situation you're in. So, uh, you know, the spring race we were leading, and uh, you know, I think we we're good. The first restart, second one, I was good. And I think there was a third one, and I didn't fire off very good in that restart. And um, you know, I don't think Brad could have hit me any harder without knocking his radiator out and knocking my tail off. So I don't know how much more aggressive it can really get than that. <laughs> I thought that was uh, very aggressive for the for the win last spring. There was three or four of us all there, uh, nose to tail, mixing it up and and kind of getting bumped around. And uh, you know, trying to trying to hang on to it. So I, I think it just depends what spot you're in. I mean, like you say, if you're, you know, no matter what spot you're in, if you're not within striking distance to the leader, it's not like you can be rougher, or more aggressive to win the race. I think it just depends, you know, where you're at, what what situation you're in. Back in the back here. John Hustler, NASCAR Productions. Uh, this is a preview question. Um, next week uh, is obviously Chicago. Uh, you've had success there in the past. Um, how are you and your team preparing for that race and efforts to get a good start off in the chase? And are you feeling confident heading into that race since you won there last year? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the better you run, the more confident you are, you know, naturally. Um, you know, we, had, we tested there a few weeks ago. It was, it was okay. Um, 
you know, I feel like we've been, you know, like I talked about gaining it on it in performance. I feel like we've been able to run in the top five and, and run pretty good. And if you can run up in the top five and keep putting yourself in position enough times, you know, hopefully eventually you'll get those wins. So, um, so, so I think we feel pretty good as a group going to Chicago. Um, I thought it loud and we all ran really good. So I think we feel pretty good about going there as well. But, um, you know, yeah, you, you do want to go there and, and, and get a good start. You know, you want to go get a, get a good finish or, or even better a win, you know, to get the thing started for sure. Any additional questions for Matt? We'll start with Nate, Bob, Stan. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Given the way things ended in April, is, is this track more conducive uh, to kind of people roughing each other up than it has been in past years? It seems like, I guess it's what, 10 years into a repave, and it seems like tire wear is getting, getting greater and guys can kind of race each other harder here. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it's all situational. You know, I mean, if, um, you know, you, you fire off on a restart and everybody, you know, gets two car lengths away from each other and you can't get any closer, you know, no. But, you know, I think um, any racetrack and any race, no matter what time of year it is or, you know, what's going on, if the guy leading the race mm -hmm. is slower than the guys behind him, you know, and they're having a hard time getting around him, you know, that's always when you see more aggression and um, obviously see more passing, more moves, you know, because you can – you know, smell blood in the water. Leaders hanging on for all he's worth, and you're faster than he is, and you're trying to get by him. So I think, whenever you have a situation like that, you know that's when uh, you know you, you usually see it get aggressive. Then we'll go over here to Bob. I'm Bob Cochran, Sporting News. Uh, Hendrick and Penske have combined for like 16 of the 25 wins. I mean, do you see those two organizations as kind of the ones that are kind of the ones to beat, starting the chase? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about that Michigan test and reducing power and all that. I think they should just put tapered spacers on those guys for the chase. <laughs> Leave ours alone. I think that'd be good. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, um, you know, Penske, Penske's been really strong as well for sure. Um, you know, but it, it seems like it's been Penske and, um, you know, the HMS, Stuart Haas cars, you know, kind of same thing. Those engines and cars have been uh, – it's been a group to beat this year for sure. They've been really strong. I mean – you know, and there's they're they're so fast, and there's so many of them that even when a couple of them miss it, you know, there's a couple more that didn't, and uh, you know, it's it seems to me anyway, the end of almost every race, it's um, you know, one of those guys you got to beat. Go ahead, Stan. Stan Creekmore. Um, technically, a driver could get all the way to Homestead and just be the highest finishing driver and not have to win at all during the chase. How critical, though, do you believe a win will be during the chase? Well, I mean, I, you know, none of us know that, you know, until it's, until it's over. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I think, um, I know the rules are all different, but I've seen Tony win the championship, win in five times in a chase, and I think he won it one time without winning any races in a chase. So, I mean, I, you know, certainly I think odds are that whoever wins the championship is going to win some races and most likely win them in the chase. But, um, you know. None, none of us really know that. Uh, there's only one winner and 42 guys that that don't, you know, each race. So you go out and give it, give it your best. Try to bring your best stuff. Race as hard as you can every week, and um, you know, take that week's result and uh, move on to the next week. Back to Kenny. Yeah, Kenny Bruce NASCAR.com again. Two things, Matt. One, did you get enough laps on the tires out there today to get any kind of feel for how they're going to be this weekend? And also. And how that might impact what you guys try to do? Yeah, the tire thing. I mean, I you know, I probably need to let a couple cars get on track tomorrow. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't, um, I, I don't foresee any wear issues. You know, I think it's going to be the opposite. I think it's going to be grip issues. You know, it seemed like it was really slow, hardly any grip, rubbered up real quick, but no wear. You know, so um, you know, we'll find out more tomorrow. Talladega. You know, it was just such a mess. Uh, I guess it was Daytona was the last plate race. You know, qualifying was just such a mess. You know, people going 100 miles an hour, people going 200 miles an hour, people jamming the brakes so the guy couldn't draft behind him and get a faster lap. I mean, it was uh, uh, not not um, probably not that great to watch, and it probably wasn't the safest situation to be in at, at the same time. So I think by shortening the rounds, at least, um, you know, you can wait for a lap, but I think it probably takes a minute and a half to leave pit road and take their green. So only being five minutes... You know, obviously, it's going to alleviate a lot of that messing around, and you're going to be out there and trying to time your run and uh, and, and get your lap sooner. So I, I think those are those are good changes. Nate, I'm trying to think of a delicate way to ask this. 
<laughs> when, when, when Denny didn't make the chase last year, he talked a few weeks later about how when they had cars l lined up, they, they sometimes went to you or to Kyle, um, I think, or maybe it was chassis or something like that, 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 that they had sort of picked out, the, 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 the team had a pecking order. D d does that give you some relief to know, I guess, I mean, being in the chase, does that, does that kind of change that dynamic? Did you remember that at all from last year, I guess? You know, what, what, what's the feeling, I guess, like for your team? I know that you guys approach every race the same, you want to win, but now that like you're in the chase and your teammates are as well, like you guys are all kind of on the same page as opposed to last year. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, uh, I don't really call, recall that, that last year. Um, you know, Kyle and Denny are both really great teammates. Um, all three crew chiefs work, work really well together. Um, you know, if somebody wasn't in a chase and there was two other guys and they wanted something of Jason's or however you want to put it, you know, I mean, as we always try to do what's best for the company. I think, I think we all do. And, you know, we all understand that, but, um, you know, we all got good cars. It's not like, it's not like we only build one of them and two guys didn't get them. So, I mean, we're, we're trying to build better cars all the time, you know, and, um, and get us all better cars all the time. But certainly, you know, as you're behind and catching up, you know, like this summer, there was some, some cars that were, were better and, you, you know, that you kind of had to go in order and, uh, the crew chiefs and, uh, management and engineering, everything work all that out, how that works. And to my knowledge, there's never been a problem with that. So I think it's just, um, you know, business is usually you help your teammates as much as you can um, until race day, and then you go try to beat them. You know, I, I don't think so. It's just been a busy week. We tested at Charlotte this week and um, had to be here today for practice already. And Monday was a holiday race real late Sunday. So it was a really busy week. So um, I, I didn't even get to the shop this week with all the stuff we had going on. So I, I don't think. Um, I don't think really anything changed. We already had our, our cars kind of slated for Chicago, what we wanted to take. And, um, you know, Jason's always got a, a pretty good plan. And, you know, whether we made it or didn't make it, no matter where we were, where we were in points, we're still going to – still as a plan going forward. We still want to do the best you can every week, you know, no matter where you are in the points. You know, you want to show up and try to win. So um, I, I don't think it changed anything we had planned. Any final questions for Matt? We'll wrap up with Bob in the front. Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Do you think the penalties NASCAR issued last year to Waltrip will prevent anything like that from happening this weekend? And is the fact that there's 16 drivers in the chase, do you think that kind of also might, you know, keep, keep people from, from going to those extremes? Oh, man. I'd be, the smartest thing for me to do is not touch that one. But, um, you, you know, it's, it's different. You know, because a win is going to get somebody in and knock the other guy out. So um, I, there's nobody in their right mind that would ever give up a win on, on this level. It's way too hard to win races. So I don't think you have to worry about that. You can put that out of your mind. And uh, and other than that, I, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. I would I would assume every. You know, there's been 25 weeks to get there. Um, I, honestly, I've been in a bubble here before, and um, I've made it most times. One time we didn't, and uh, you know my approach when I came into it and it's still kind of the same thought as you had 25 weeks to get it done. You know, it's not all about this week. It's a, this is a one, one twenty sixth of the chances and opportunities and races and laps and miles that you had to get yourself in a position to make it. So I know everybody stares at it a lot closer, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't think things happen here. that are that much more out of the ordinary that might happen on week four or six or 10 or whatever. All right, Matt, thanks for coming right, in no and problem. good luck this weekend.